I love that. Um, welcome to uh, my Q&A. Here's the deal. When I, I'm usually on that side of the table. I'm a con gore since I was a kid. I'm a big fucking geek. I, I, I'm a fanboy. And what I end up doing is, you know, going to panels. And you guys know the drill. Sometimes you get bored stiff. It could be, you know, Superman. I mean, really Superman. Kal-El on the panel. And you're bored because you're like, Krypton, we know. You know what I mean? So I, I, what I dig is getting a chance to ask and they don't have to be relevant. I mean, sometimes you want to know, you know, where people grew up, you want to know what got them into what they do, what they did, if you heard about something. So I said, fuck it, it's going to be a QA. and a it's, it's all questions. Um, I threw in, I mentioned Dom, Don, Da Vinci, because that's the latest stuff. But if some of you guys, I can see faces that are more familiar with my work and, and know that back from the Enterprise and shit like that. It's so fucking cool. What? But, um, uh, did I hear what? <laughs> I was on Star Trek The Next Generation, and, and some people don't know that. They just, really? don't, they just don't dominate Santiago, which is fine by me. So, yeah, I don't know you know Who actually is in the audience today? Stand up. I like seeing that. <laughs> they have real applause. That is definitely very exciting to see. Now, for those of you that don't let that Leo's voice, like, what the fuck happened to the voice? What's the topic of that? So, um, yeah, it's a QA and a and uh, not a lineup thing. It's not like my action figure support group where I make people say, I am Peter, and the whole room goes, hi, Peter, <laughs> which is all kinds of cool. But uh, it's, uh, it's about show business. It's my third year at Kineticon. I love you guys, and I just want you guys to uh, ask away about voice acting, about acting, about uh, you know, TV, uh, secrets about celebrities. Uh, you know. one chair which <laughs> There's a chair that's vibrating. It's vibrating. Did you bring that chair? <laughs> just because you're sitting you in the rest. wrong chair. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Right there, wrong chair. Um, what, what voice do you think is like the most difficult for you to do? For me to do? Yeah. I did, I started um, doing uh, animation for Sobers. And I wanted to play, and I talk about it all the time. In fact, Chris, who's uh, another guest uh, this year, uh, his first time, and he's, he's got a lot of cool credits. And I listen to all these great anime credits of his and game credits, like really cool shit, just like Duke Nukem's great credits have for voice actor, and you know, again, being a geek, I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know, Duke's at the end of the table. But when he said, uh, Chris said he was Superman in uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, and I was like, you play fucking Superman? <laughs> because I, 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 I am, I'm sure that there's a part of me that got into acting, besides the, the obvious. Um, <laughs> your hat is killing you, dude. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you. So, um, uh, there's a part of me that I wanted to play my heroes, and my holy trinity of heroes is, I think that's like that, but is um, Batman, Iron Man, and James Bond, and they've been that since I was a kid. And the reason being is that they're like the no superpower super guys, you know what I mean? And, you know, one way or another, they're heroic and super cool and all that shit. Well, those are the guys that I keep wanting to play, and they elude me. Okay. It just it doesn't happen. And I've been every the fun fact, the last ten years, in every single Batman incarnation from the animated series through Arkham City, through uh, every single incarnation of Batman, I've gone down to the wire with Kevin Conroy or with somebody else that books the job. And it's to get to your question of what's hard is that I I get cast as the bad guys, which is cool. It's totally cool, okay? But I wanna I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna beat the shit out of James Bond. I wanna be James Bond. <laughs> and it's cool to beat up Daniel Craig in a video game. That's totally cool. And I've done that. It's awesome, okay? But but what, what's difficult is to sustain that bad guy grapple. But I can do it. You know, that's what I get paid for, it's my gig and I dig it. But isn't this all kinds of fantastic? Yeah. <laughs> We have Thad in the house, and uh, let's just take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so the consistency of the uh, yeah, yeah, so great, thank you. Uh, there's cleavage in the room, guys. Just, I'm all kinds of side effects. Right. So, the gravel of, you know, It, it sounds cool for about an hour, and after that, it gets more gravity, and it gets down in your sternum. And then they're like, um, you're getting a little high. And you're like, 
really? And they're like, yeah, yeah, at the beginning you have one because you were there. And that is difficult and it starts getting painful because you're, you know, you start like the cool guy that's beating up Batman and then you're like, <coughs> you know, trying to get back in that zone. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's, 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 it's rough and you, you do whatever you can to get there. But um, the, uh, the bad guy thing is, it's hip, it's cool, and it hurts. It's difficult. The question? Right here. Have you ever seen any of Leonardo da Vinci's works in person? I actually have. I'm born and raised in San Francisco, and uh, the De Young Museum, uh, when uh, many years ago, um, has had stuff go through. But the new Getty uh, in Los Angeles, new meaning in the last decade, okay, but the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, they um, just did a Da Vinci exhibit, and uh, Da Vinci was going to show up. I, I had to go there and be like, do you play video games? Do you play video games? Isn't that beautiful? Do you play video games? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I have, and um, I was talking about this with a couple of art students that are uh, that are here at the convention, and that went to Florence and everything, and, and we were talking about like uh, if you are, I mean, I'm sort of known for being obsessive and probably OCD, but really, really thorough in my research. I take I take this geek stuff really seriously. Like I I I show up and I know more than the directors and the, even the writers in some cases where they're like. Superman's from Krypton? You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm like, oh, fuck, you know? <laughs> you know? And, and it's, it's trip playing a historical character because people are very protective and possessive about what they admire, what they dig. And some people were really kind of upset that they had included him in the game because they said it was trivializing a genius and blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, I will step up. I'm so challenged and excited to try to make Leo legit and, and and you know, a good guy and friend and an ally and all that good stuff. And also, it's fun. You know, it's a game at the end of the day. And so, seeing the work, I was talking to these art students that told me that had I seen Adam in person, and no, I've only seen the pictures. But usually, you know, I don't know if some of you have ever had that experience that I had. The first time I saw the Statue of Liberty, I thought it was a miniature, and we were going to eventually see the real one <laughs> because it's small, it's relatively small compared to what you see on television. You think it's the Statue of Liberty, and say, like, no, the Statue of Liberty. It's, it's, it's a reasonable size, and I'm like, people fit in that thing, really? Because it looks so small from the sat down the ferry, you know? It's well, cramps. Adam, it's not like that. I was told that Adam is like a giant. It's, it's, it's like, all that's missing is a bean stock. Like, it's, it's a really big work of art, it's amazing. And I think that um, anybody that's capable of that kind of uh, contributions to society and culture, and, you know, us humans, um, I, I love that challenge. I wanna, I wanna like be that guy for more than two games, and, and, and you know, make it irrelevant. I mean, did you guys any of you see Assassin's Creed Ascendance? Okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to tell you guys about this. Uh, show of hands, how many of you are uh, PS3 people? Okay, PS3. I've got PS3 and an Xbox. Okay, and uh, say 360, of course, and the original. But uh, I mean, in this whole gaming console thing, what's really funny is that the PS3 is my portal to like movies. It really did become that media thing where I'm, I buy a lot of stuff on there and then fill up the hard drive and dump stuff out. And the number one selling uh, film, even though it's a short, um, was the animated film Assassin's Creed Ascendance that was just me and Roger Craig Smith who played Ezio. And it's a story about what's going on with Ezio and, and uh, uh, Leo uh, right before Brotherhood. And it's, 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 it's awesome, guys. You've got to check it out. It's stylized, so it doesn't look cartoony. It looks very artistic because of Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, I encourage you to check it out. Um, and moreover, the reason I bring it up is I'm really proud of it because it charted at number one film for two weeks on PS uh, PlayStation Store. And that's really amazing for a, a short you know, cartoon about video game characters, you know? And uh, for those of you that dig on Leo, um, Leo fans, right? Nice. Leo fans. <laughs> Me too. And uh, Leo, he, uh, he's a sweet character. Okay, he's, I, I kind of love the guy. Okay, and uh, my love affair with Leo is <laughs> solid. Okay, and so what happens in this short film that I wanted is to show that the guy he doesn't just hurt when he doesn't get hugged. Okay, <laughs> he hurts because he has to make decisions. That these things come from real history. Uh, when he starts working for the Borgias, sorry, that's a spoiler, but uh, you know he, he does. And, uh, you know, allying yourself with the bad guys, truly the bad guys historically, at the same time that you have been, uh, you know, a support system and an ally 
to you know someone that you care about and fuck it, I'll say that you love. You know, Ezio's Ezio's an amazing hero. He's he's fighting a good fight, and and you know. Uh, Leo has this thing in a sentence where you get to really see, at least I think, you get to see and hear how he feels about that whole change. So check it out. Next question. Right. Really? Turn off that phone. That's rude. Is it necessary for to kill off Don's wife? Was it necessary? I mean, like it was kind of like his whole. Would be awesome if I told it, kill her. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not kill her? Shit. Wives? Uh, no, so Dom, uh, his story arc, and this I guess would be a horrible spoiler if you don't know, but in Years of War II, uh, Dom finds Maria, and it's been his, his mission since she went missing, and the kids died, and after losing a brother, he read Asphalt Fields. Um, the Santiago family has contributed. He, I, I've always said that I, and this is me, this is not Microsoft ever talking, this is me with my research and my, my work on the character. I believe that the Santiago family is a real metaphor, at least for me, again, specifically, don't start tweeting this shit. But I, I uh, that uh, it's uh, the military families in this country. The military families that have, like, my dad was in the army, my brother was in the army, my mom was in the army, they give more than we could ever imagine. Like, and I'm not being a jingoistic, like, Yahoo. I'm, it's legit. I have people that have lost so many family members in wars, you know. And if we're gonna if we're gonna play war games, it's awesome and all that. But if we're gonna try to bring any level of realism to it, it's really important to I think to share that that if it's gonna be a visceral game and get you involved and invested. Um, loss, true loss, the feeling of loss, I think is really important because then it's just another shooter. And I love just another shooters. But this game is not just another shooter. It's, 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 it's a trilogy. There's, there's, there's a lot that's going on besides just chainsawing monsters. So Dom being the moral, I, I think kind of a moral center for, for, the, for the game. And you know, Marcus is a badass and someone to look up to in the game. Uh, Baird, you know, levity and all that stuff. Cole, lots of levity. He's awesome, you know. And, uh, but Dom, if you, if you really want me to answer, you know, you know, should they have killed his wife? Um, well, no, nothing like that has to happen. But if you, in, in the story, when he finds her, and you know, she's been reduced to just a shell of a, of a human, um, what, I mean, better is a bad word, but what stronger way to feel loss than you, you, you get that close to having your family come home from that war or wherever they're suffering? And you're the one that has to deal with taking them out, or, or, or seeing them die, or burying them. So that's why it's so heavy duty. And you know, I didn't mean to bring the room down, but <laughs> but you guys get that, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's not. I appreciate that. Good One answer. Hand clap. Um, <laughs> so, next question, right there. Have you ever had to do motion capture for any of your uh, characters? The, I've done motion capture uh, for a few, uh, most notably, and good timing, man. I did a motion capture for the Maria scene. That's, that's my body, my facial recognition, and my voice. Um, but what's, uh, I will definitely take the room out of the uh, morose tone that we got into. Um, when I did the motion capture uh, uh, scene, they wanted, they, uh, they were like, will you do the motion capture? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, that is, how cool is that? It's going to be my body and my voice and all that shit. Did not think it through at all. Have you guys seen the suits that people wear from Oka? <laughs> Aren't they sexy? <laughs> right on the nose, my friends. That's what we're all going to wear in the future. would actually be a little more butch. They're ping pong balls. <laughs> and they give you a headband with a ping pong ball. <laughs> She loves, and you look like you're a fucking cartoon, okay? So, and then, there, I'm like, um, I'm carrying a Lancer, and they're like, oh, here, and they give me a big uh, Nerf, like, fucking, you know, Nerf gun. <laughs> it's orange and blue, okay? And the other guy that's playing Marcus in the scene, doing his mocap, is carrying a super soaker. <laughs> Don't get him wet, Marcus! <laughs> So, so uh, they, they, they got a legit actress. In fact, the voice of uh, Maria Santiago uh, in the flashbacks and all that stuff is uh, Brandon Routh, who played Superman. Mm -hmm. Brandon Routh's wife. And uh, so that's Maria is 
Superman's wife, how cool is that, right? <laughs> so, um, Superman, Tom Santiago, you know. So, she, uh, they bring this legit actress for me to act off of, to, to do the scene. Now, for those of you who have seen the scene, it's so fucking sad. It's sad, like, fuck. <laughs> like, 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 so sad, it, it, I can see where you asked, should, did we have to do that? Because it really kind of fucks you up if you're into it. Because you're like, you know, where are we gonna go kill people next? And you're like, what is going on right now? <laughs> what, you know, it's like, it's really a tricky thing to, to deal with when you're gaming. But I've got this actress, and I don't think that she planned the guy in the ping pong ball suit to get so into it. Because <laughs> as you've heard or seen the scene, I get really into it. So she's got me crying in her face, this close. So I'm like, Ooh! right in her face. And she, being the pro that she is, is giving me this to act off of. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, got a cut, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and, you know, I, really, I apologize, and she's like, <laughs> and I swear she's probably the first person before the game came out that just looked at me like, it's the video game, dude. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? Sorry, Mr. Brando, what the fuck are you doing? So, anyway, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, that mocap uh, story is uh, for you guys. Nobody really knows that story. It's kind of fucking shit, but I don't know why. Alright, anybody else? Over there, teacher. Team Magic, the t-shirt. <laughs> um, the guy over there with the writing on the t-shirt. You know what's good about, cool about Dom? In years one, he's really the only levity. He's the first guy you see when he breaks Marcus out of jail. He then is the guy that's always going, what the fuck is that? What's that? Man, what the shit? Fuck, what? <laughs> and and that, that sarky, you know, attitude, there's a lot of that to me. I know you never guess. So I, we improvised a lot. Uh, Epic kind of wrote the book on letting actors improvise and write our guys because uh, Lester Spade, who plays the Coltrane, that whole Coltrane baby and all that shit, that's him. That's, him. that's that guy. He talks like that in different. <laughs> Seriously, I, I have joked with him where I go like, um, like, I just, we fuck around with each other, so I'm like, I'm like do cold and cold, which we don't, we don't do that to each other. That's, that's, actors, we're hams and all that, but we really are kind of uneasy acting for each other. It really is true. It's for you guys, all the time, we're like fucking monkeys. Dance, dance. You know? <laughs> but, but with each other, it's kind of weird to be going, and now watch me do Duke Nukem again. You know, we don't do that. So, but, but Lester, so I'm joking, right? And I'm like, and again, I just said, we, we don't do this, and I'm like, uh, uh, we're having dinner at one of the conventions in San Diego, and I go, I go, yeah, I'm going to do cold. And he goes, woo! Like, yeah, like that! Like, I was like, what's up, bitches? Like, uh, should we all be doing our shit? Like, uh, but um, the fun part is, like, here's one, is that I was the one that got to talk shit. Uh, it's fun, man, to, to have an opportunity to act, to do the cool acting shit. So here's two, the, the fun part was getting to do that crazy, bizarre scene with Maria and all that stuff. Um, and I can't talk about the third game. But but um, but uh, I will say I will say that uh, the best part about playing Dom is that I busted my ass to make him real, and I never feel false. I never feel like I'm doing something that's uh, a caricature of a person. When Dominic Santiago trivia for you guys is Dom was originally called Dominic Glynn, <laughs> and and he and he talked. And I will do where he started. This is when it was in development, before it was even called Years of War. The, uh, his his uh, vocal quality, if you will, was, Marcus, man, check that out. That's crazy. Look at her, man. I don't even know why she's over here. So Cheech and Chong. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> and, and I thought, I'm in the booth. We did, we did work a lot of the booth together, and it would really bust me up to be originally being like, you know, you know, what is that? What is that creature over there? And, and then hearing John be like, shut the fuck up, Tom. <laughs> and, and, and so it was it was quite rewarding to get to a place where he sounds more like me. And uh, and you know, he's a fucking superhero, man. And he sounds like me. That's as that's, that's fun as it gets. Another question? Uh, right here. Um, after the next generation, did you go out for any roles in the following Star Trek series? I did. Actually, um, the great thing about Judy, Larry, Johnson, and Ron Sermon, the people that did casting for Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, is um, 
it has been so long, it's no problem to talk about it. Um, I was uh, after being an ensign, dying terribly, and the famous red shirt and all that cool shit, all that cool Star Trek shit. Um, I was up for uh, the Chakotay part uh, that Robert Beltran had, and I know Robert. Um, we have ex-girlfriends in common and shit. Like, we, like, we like know each other really well, like, like, like that well. And uh, I was happy, man, that a brother got a great job playing this. Uh, he, he made the character like not just Native American, but like sort of Latin, Native American. And I'm Latin Italian, so I, I was like, that's kind of cool. Because yeah, uh, my guy wasn't Latin per se. But, I mean, my, my name on Next Gen was Ensign Dern. I mean, yeah, you know. But um, yeah, Voyager was up at Chicote, and um, the uh, films, you know, they, they, they would talk to me about reading for stuff, and even I would, I, you know, again, I take this way too seriously, but being a trekking my whole life, uh, more trekker, for those of you that have a sick of your ass, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I actually had meetings where they were saying, like, you know, you should be in this one scene in first contact, and I'm like, if I saw the guy that died, uh, you know, <laughs> next gen, hanging out on Earth, you know, eating with Troy or some shit. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I kind of hate that because it happens. It happens in Star Trek all the time, where you're like, the evil villain, you know, was you know sleeping with Troy two episodes ago or something. You know, and you're like, what's going on? Maybe that's why he's eating. Okay, uh, right there. As a Trek fan, I feel about the new movie. That's the history. I dug it. I. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. it I, I, I don't have any problems. I've been waiting for Star Trek babies for a long time. And, and you know, that's what I call the movie, because it's like, that's what everybody can want to see, young Kirk, young Spock. They've been debating it, how to do it. Uh, this, the script, I mean, being in show business, I see a lot of scripts and shit. The script originally, before J.J. Abrams got anywhere near it, uh, was horrible. And it was like, I'm not kidding, this is totally fun. Are there other Trek League fans or the Star Trek fans now? Okay, cool, because I don't want to be like talking about that if you guys are like, go back to Dom. <laughs> um, no, it's not that shit. <laughs> you know, you're old. All right, so um, Star, Star Trek, um, they, the, the script for the, uh, the Star Trek babies, okay, script, was um, Kirk and Spock, uh, Shatner and McCoy, uh, Shatner, Shatner and, what's his fucking name, Nimoy? Shatner and Nimoy, um, chilling around the campfire, Literally, <laughs> and 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 Forrest Kelly wasn't. It was just them two. They're like, we need Spock and Kirk. We do not need anybody else. Okay, seriously. And they would have them at the opening of the movie going, "Remember what it was like back in the Starfleet years?" <laughs> seriously. And then and then and this. I'm almost remembering this verbatim because it really burned my ass. Then Spock is like, "It was a highly illogical time, wasn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> like, nauseating. And, and then all of a sudden, like Matt Damon was running around as fucking Kirk. He was, he was supposed to be Kirk. Matt Damon. And, or is, if you, those of you that have seen Team America World Police, yeah. Matt Damon. So he's, he, him being a young Kirk is just too bizarre. You know? But uh, yeah, so there's, there's the Star Trek story. Right here. Did you go for the only reason you got voice acting, or is there another reason? Uh, no, I mean, that it's, uh, okay, the reason that most actors or any performer, uh, besides the artistic part of being creative and finding what works for you, but most people that want to be on stage or in front of a camera um, tend to have a lot of hero worship and a lot of idol worship and, and, and you know, want to pretend and want to get, I mean, uh, being paid to work in video games or a cartoon. When I was working on Justice League and I was sitting with The Flash, Green Lantern, you know, the, the, some Green, uh, uh, the Green Lantern Corps guys, Wonder Woman, Hot Girl, and we're all doing this shit. You know, I want to go back in time to my nine-year-old self and be like, dude, it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> you know I mean? it, and, you know, that, that's, that's what got me into, into acting. And, uh, but originally, I was in music. Uh, those of you that were at Kineticon last year, uh, I DJed a set at the rave. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It was awesome, but I, I, if I do say so myself, I, I, uh, I'm a DJ, I'm a club DJ, and paid my way through grad school. When I was getting my MFA, I was, I was DJing in nightclubs in San Francisco, and uh, I gave up music uh, to, to pursue acting, because it was just a better fit, but there was still that part of me that wanted to be, you know, superstar DJ behind the one and twos, and just be the guy up there, and not just down here dancing like I was, you know, and, and that's, voice acting is the same kind of thing, like, I, 
I seek out the deep shit. Like I'm, if, if I've told my agents, my agents have been, my voiceover agents have been the same agents I've had for 17 years. And yeah, they're not gonna let me go, it's awesome. Uh, but they, uh, they, uh, they've made a lot of money with me, I've made a lot of money with them, and what they know is, and that's all I get, man, that's all I get is superheroes, villains, spies, uh, everything, is all like physical, GameStop, commercial, anything that's pop culture comes my way because they know I love it. They know that I'm gonna put my heart into it. When something comes across my desk, as they say, and it's Roman meal bread, I'm like, no, it's delicious. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a, it's, it's good a fit. So. Over here on this side, let's do you and Pat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. I said, you and Pat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the game Duke Nukem Forever, there's a bit of a rip on the uh, character. There's uh, Marcus and Dom in the... Uh, in the trailer, right? Not the trailer, but in the uh, opening. Oh. In the, uh, not the opening, uh, the levels. We encounter a uh, very foul-mouthed individual who goes about saying, like, Oh, man, I, tell, I can't believe it. You know, I just have to, like, pussy-ass friend or whatever for help find you. Don't curse, man. You don't have to resource that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, I'm kidding. That's what he said. Alright. I told you, stop, relax. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know, I know. I know. I've heard about this. I, I saw something. I don't know what it is. Okay. Let's see. Um, I saw a thing on Twitter that said, this is what Marvel is going to do. They're going to make Duke Nukem Forever the Duke of Nukem Forever. Like, that's what they're going to do. Um, so, I know. I've heard about this. I, I saw something. I don't know what it is. Okay. I don't know what it is. But I saw something that essentially boiled down to Duke or somebody in the game going, hey, there's that big fucking guy with pussy that kills his wife. You know, something like that in the game. Okay? Or it's a traitor. I was like, cheap shot, but so what? It's fucking Duke Nukem, man. I mean, I, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, <laughs> have you seen the guy? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, mean, you, you know, I, I, I said this yesterday at the same panel. People, because I'm such a geek, they ask, they, they, they uh, and press does this a lot, the bloggers, and, and, and uh, I mean, I don't get chased down by CNN for this, but like bloggers and shit, they'll ask me, what do you think of the Star Trek movie? And they quote me. They're like, you know, Charles Farrell or whatever, the old movie Assassin's Creed says, you know, fuck you to Star Trek, whatever, you know, like, like they, they, they overrun with a story or an opinion. And what they'll ask me is about geek stuff. And Duke Nukem is a perfect example. Um, when the, I'm a Planet of the Apes guy, okay? And when, like the old school Planet of the Apes, where it's obviously it's a guy in a fucking mask. Yeah! <laughs> That's fucking so cool. Right? Yeah! And there's a fucking mask with the mouth not moving, but people are like, what's a fucking ape? That's so great. You know? Any movie you can sit through going, <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. Well, when Tim Burton made his, okay, everybody was like sacrilege, like, you know, he changed the story, he did all this, and then sure enough, it came to me. And uh, I talked about this on Twitter too. People asked me, like, you know, what you think of Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes? And I said, were they talking apes in it? And they're like, yeah, it's a good Planet of the Apes movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I want to go to a new Star Trek movie. I want to go to a new Batman movie. I mean, I, I know people that told me they're like, Dark Knight. I saw Dark Knight with a cast. How cool is that? I was, at, I was at the premiere sitting with the casting crew at Warner Brothers private screen. Okay? And Afterwards, I was floating on air because I got to see the new Batman movie with Batman. <laughs> and people said to me, yeah, the movie's too long. And I'm like, what? <laughs> too long? I was ready to give me more shit. Fucking the Joker, bust him out of jail, let's keep going. <laughs> more, it's a good Batman movie because Batman's in it, let's go. So I'm pretty forgiving when it comes to, you know, cheap shots and shit like that. It's good people, man. Now, if, if you know, if Master Chief was saying, you know, fuck those guys from Years of War, I might be like, hey! <laughs> Anybody else? Questions? Keep going. Right there. Who did you vote? Do you vote for Carmine Libertad? I saved Carmine. That was me. I was saved Carmine. You're on the squad, you don't want anybody to die. <laughs> I, I thought it would be really weird to be like, yeah, fucking kill Carmine. <laughs> Dom says, fuck Carmine. You know? <laughs> they suffered enough. Exactly, totally. Carmine, man. Gears of War. Right here. Alright, um, are you going to be doing this tonight? Okay, here's the deal. I would have DJed tonight. That's straight up, I would have done it. But they changed the person that was running the, the rave to somebody else that also worked on the raves. He's not a new guy, but he's, he wasn't the main guy. And I put that together with the old guy. So this, this didn't, no one asked me. And I would have brought my vinyl. I'm a vinyl DJ. And, and uh, I would have brought my shit. I, I don't just bring an MP3 file or any of that kind of shit. I'm, I'm for real. I, and I do it by ear. I don't, I don't use any software, which is like kind of unheard of. No Serato or no any kind of those of you that are DJs. Um, so, 
people have asked me today, not just am I going to, but would I if, if, uh, if I use the, if they use vinyl, if I'll use their vinyl. And honestly, those of you, I'm going to be at the right, I'll be there. I mean, I, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. But uh, those of you that would like me to DJ, tell the DJs that, that they, you want to see the DJ, because that will make them know that someone gives a shit, and it's not just me going, I'm here. <laughs> would you like me to DJ? <laughs> I know that's what you're doing, but would you like me to do it? <laughs> no, no, fuck you guys. <laughs> would you like me to do it? <laughs> so, uh, you guys are interested, tell them. Uh, wait, I, did, I want something from this side. Any questions on this side? Or I'll just make you all leave. No. no. Right there. Great, great question. Gears of War, the live action motion picture, was so going to happen and would have been out by now. Which is a bummer for those of you that are fans of movies and shit like I am. Because I, first and foremost, wanted the Years of War movie to be a good movie. I didn't, I didn't, people were asking me like, oh, are you mad if you're not going to play dumb? And I'm like, why am I not going to play dumb? What kind of drama you Who have you been talking to? You know, and don't say legendary pictures because I'll be all disappointed. But um, when, when the initial deal was put together, it, it went this way. New Line Cinema uh, acquired the rights uh, to, uh, to, to make the movie and they sold the rights to Legendary and that is the equivalent of Toyota or Honda selling the rights to Maserati or Aston Martin they, or Lamborghini. Like they, Legendary Pictures, you guys have seen that logo at the beginning of the best movies like Dark Knight. Ghost um, I mean, Rider. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, that's not a great movie. <laughs> no, but Legendary Pictures, they, they are the new blockbuster cast. They, their properties are Superman, Batman, I mean, heavy, heavy, good shit, you know? And so, Legendary, um, they're like, oh, we're, we're gonna have uh, Len Wiseman, who directed Live Free or Die Hard, and he also directed the Underworld movies. So, Underworld movies, I don't even, I'm a big vampire fan too, but the Underworld movies like, didn't speak to me, like, I, I, I like the look of it, but like, I was like, you know, you know, I want blood and shit, like, what, why are we, do shit. Like it, was, like it wasn't a whole lot happening. But then again, Len Wiseman's wife is Kate Beckinsale. You can do worse than watch Kate Beckinsale chase werewolves and shit. So. so Underworld, you know, aesthetically I thought, the guy's got a good eye. Live for your die hard, I think it's a really good die hard movie. You know, it's like the Plan the Age thing. You know, was, was John McClane kicking ass? Yes, it's a good die hard movie. You know what I mean? And so I thought right there, I'm like, if they put armor on Bruce Willis and the fucking Mac guy, it would be a pretty decent Years of War movie. You know what I mean? Like, he's not gonna fuck it up. You know, what I mean? like, you know think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you got the bald guy and you know the dark-haired guy, and they're just killing people and shit. So, so I was in. I was totally in. And then it got better because they told me to get the movie shape, which for an actor is like you know getting shape for like being on stage for a few months, getting the best shape of your life, and they're gonna put armor on you if you are involved in this. They started talking to me about the script. Chris Morgan, the writer of the Wanted movie. I'm a fan of Wanted the comic, so the adaptation was kind of loose and uh, that kind of thing. But I thought Wanted was a pretty cool play. I, I, you know, Angelina Jolie, what are you gonna do? You know, so, um, but he tells me very seriously. And these, these are kind of secret stories, so keep it to yourself. But uh, no, I, I was up for Dawn, which is all kinds of awesome. Now we're, we're going back a couple years, okay? But I was kind of in. I'm like, I don't care if it's Dawn. In the beginning, Don in the middle, Don when he's sleeping. <laughs> you know, one scene, I'll take it. But my thing was this, and, I, and this is, I have not, I've not told this story, this is all for you guys. Um, I did something that most actors would say, what are you fucking crazy? So I'm being pitched that they're going to have movie stars, A-list, A-list, A-list. But because Dom is such a, a, a pivotal thing, and you guys, you guys dig my Dom, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It would be a little weird to have John Leguizamo playing Dom, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason you know, I said that. But anyway, so it would be a little weird, I thought, okay? So, so when, when this is being bandied about the concept, I did what no actor would do. I tried to talk them out of it because what I wanted to play 
And do you guys want to hear the, what I wanted to play? It's, it's, it's a little weird. It's not perfect, it's cold. <laughs> it's, it's that weird. It's as weird as we wanted to be cold. Okay? It's cold. Right. What, I, what I wanted to do, and I pitched this to, to the people involved, the writer in particular, I, I sat him down and I said, um, I want one scene. I don't even want to be in the movie. I want one scene because they do the backstory of the characters and they show Dom and Carlos, his brother, as children because that's when Emergence Day happened and all that kind of stuff. But if you show them younger, I want to play their father in one scene because then I will literally and metaphorically be Dominic Santiago's father. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gave birth to the guy in the games and now in the movie and and they, they kind of got into that right and they're, they're like nah, they're like yeah and I'm like and I, I keep talking like there's more and I'm like oh yeah I'm like and now I'm acting like I got the part like, I don't want to be dumb okay and I'm like I want to be the person that in the movie in that scene that one little flashback or, 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 or pre-title sequence, whenever this moment is that you do, that I want to be in it, I want to say with Dominic in earshot, I want to say to someone else, hey, sup bitches? <laughs> I want to say sup bitches, so that that's where he got it. <laughs> cool, right? Isn't that a great idea? This was what they said No, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's how it went. That was exactly the movie. We're not telling that story. Um, fuck. Well, so that didn't happen. And then time goes by. Man. We talked about the Gears of War movie. For those of you that paid attention, we talked about Gears of War, the film, like three and a half to four years ago. And now it's been a turnaround because Len dropped out, Chris dropped out, Legendary Stones are and Cliff Lazinski, um, at last year's panel in San Diego, he said to people, like, we've gone from saying, like, uh, we don't want it to suck, which is true, but, you know, Legendary will do a big, awesome movie, man. This is going to be our big Gears movie. And everybody's like, yeah! Then it's, it started, like, not happening. And last year, Cliff's like, you guys want more of a District 9, like a smaller movie? <laughs> right? I'm like, right? You know, because we don't know what is going to happen with the movie. It might be, like, this cool District 9 flick now with, you know, they probably will focus on the squad and, you know, a few action sequences, but um, the, the days of it being, you know, Gears of War of the film um, are on hold. It's, it's on pause. So, we'll see. So that is my long-winded Gears of War movie story. Um, right there. Um, is there, is there. Has there ever been any line that totally crashed your train of thought? What the hell is this? Um, yesterday I talked about um, how many of you in uh, show business here have played child molesters? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Just me? Yeah. Awesome, let me tell that story. <laughs> An anime fans uh, uh, that, that pay attention to the shit that I get into, I worked on a movie called Gogo Go 13 Queen Bee. And, uh, okay. Love Go so Gogo 13, famous manga, uh, the first Gogo 13 was called The Professional, uh, sort of like raised the bar for anime and American dubs, and uh, for all anime films, like, they stopped being like, you know, what, what are you doing? I don't know, I don't understand. It went from that to being like, what are you doing? Good shit, right? So Gogo is a man of few words. They hired John DiMaggio, who plays Marcus. He plays Gogo 13. He plays the James Bond assassin, which is awesome. I, I read for it, I was glad John got it, because I love John's voice. I get cast as the bad guy. How bad, I had no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah. who, who in the room has heard this story before? Okay, alright. So, I'll, I'll, I'll spin it so that I don't bore you. What ends up happening is, they tell me, they give me a script, and you know, even though I, I'm like, give me, I want to prepare and all that shit, like literally, I want to prepare for whatever this guy does. You can't prepare for this character tossing a little girl in the back of a limousine, and saying, a pretty girl like you will catch a nice price. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, can I ask you a question? <laughs> What's going on right now? <laughs> and there's a little pause, a little movement, and... Uh, oh, he's gonna rape her. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Oh. How old is she again? And they're like, I don't know, looks like nine, ten. <laughs> Hey Chris, I have another question. <laughs> Who is this little girl? Uh, could be her da his daughter, I think. <laughs> oh. I don't know. He, the, the mother has had a lot of kids, and I think that this guy's such a piece of shit that he, it doesn't really matter, Carlos. Just, just, do, just do it. Just do the line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a pretty girl like, Chris, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> And uh, it went on like that for a bit. And then um, he goes, <laughs> you, have, you guys have to rent this or see it on Netflix or something. It's so fucking funny and awesome now that you know the story behind it. But um, he goes, uh, do you want to see the footage? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's see the footage. And, and he goes, do you want to hear the, the Japanese audio? Yeah, 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 anything. Anything to help me with this child molester. <laughs> so, they show the footage, and, and they, it's this little girl, or you know, whatever, thrown into the back of a limb when she does that that typical, like stereotypical Japanese anime voice, where she's like, ah, 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 and all that shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it's so horrible. And then they cut to my character who wears glasses, Thomas Waltham is his name, and I'm not kidding. And this is supposed to help. This is, I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna help me because I'm gonna get what a piece of shit he is. I'll know the voice, and we'll move on to the next scene where he's not raping some kid. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. And he shows the girl gets the toss, and then when he does the line, he looks like this. <laughs> it didn't help. Another question. Another question. Um, any particular films that like stood up to you, whether you're a child or growing up, but any particular film that stood up to you, like, wow, this is like a great film, like, I will never forget this film, I want to. Yeah, and you know what, uh, what's really hip is that I'm, I'm weird in that I like closure on things, like, if, and again, I'm in a position where I can have this kind of closure, so I don't want to come across as, like, arrogant, where I'm going, like, you know, I always wanted to meet Superman, and then I watched Dark Knight with him. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that I, I, I watched Brendan Ralph was at the screen of uh, uh, Batman, so I'm sitting with, and I work with his wife, so I'm sitting with Superman. <laughs> okay, you know the guy who flew and shit. I'm sitting with him watching Batman. You know, at Warner Brothers Studios, where I do cartoons. I mean, it's it's a it's an awesome life. I'm very fortunate, and lucky, and, and, and I'm super lucky, and I'm really grateful. And growing up. A movie uh, that, that, like as a kid, I was like, my family was all about it, was The Godfather and Godfather 2. But particularly Godfather 2 because I thought Michael Corleone was who I wanted to be when I grew up. Because he's not a superhero, he's a gangster, but the greatest kind of gangster who's like, he's betrayed by his heart and his mind that he thinks I'm protecting my family, but he's, he's unnecessarily or just plain illegally killing people to do so. And I was like, yeah, I would do that for my family. Yeah, totally. Horse's head in the fucking bed, I'm in. <laughs> but I, but I, The Godfather 2 was a real big deal because Michael Corleone is a war hero. Back to the war hero, we bring bringing the room down again. But no, he, he's, he's, Michael Corleone is an amazing character. So when The Godfather 2 video game was being made, uh, EA wouldn't get mad that I say this, so, so it's not a big deal, but they got a lot of shit for the first Godfather game because Francis Ford Coppola wasn't involved but they have the rights. And the Scarface game that I also worked on had the rights to uh, Al Pacino's face, but, uh, and his voice, but he couldn't do the voice anymore. Well, he, if he can't do the voice of Scarface, he surely cannot do the voice of uh, uh, Michael Corleone anymore, because it's a very high-pitched version of Al Pacino. And, but they got, for Godfather 2 and for 1, they got James Caan, um, Robert Duvall, they got all the actors to work on 1, and then they got all the actors to work on 2. And, it's one of those things, man. Like, I dug that movie when I was a kid. And, and I, again, I want, I want to still want to play Batman. I still want to play a Tony Stark. And I'm always auditioning for those characters and not getting it. But when Michael Corleone, in a video game, came across my desk, it's the hardest I've ever lobbied for a job. I, I met with EA in the Bay Area, in Los Angeles. I kissed their ass, took them to lunch. I did a lot of lobbying. 
where I begged. I swear to God, it's the only job in my life I begged for. And a lot of people are like, the game sucks and all that kind of shit. But it's like, no, it doesn't. Not to me, it doesn't. Because the only two people that have played Michael Corleone are Al Pacino and me. And I was not going to let that go. I was selling them on it. And they were going like, well, do you sound like Al Pacino? And I'm like, I'm not going to do Al Pacino's Michael Corleone. I have an opportunity to make him my Michael Corleone. And then they're like, can he look like you? They're asking me if I would mind if Michael looks like me, the Godfather too, the game. That's fucking awesome. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so uh, it's that kind of thing that's...